welcome back to another TechMinds video. Now in this video, we're going to take a look at the NPR70 modem designed by F4HDK and manufactured by EddieKitsOrParts.com. You'll also be pleased to know that this project is fully open source, designed by HAMS for HAMS. Now think of these as a new style packet radio, which provides IPv4 data transfer over radio links sitting somewhere between the old packet AX25 and Hamnet, which uses Wi-Fi equipment. The front of the NPR70 hosts the main Ethernet connection, along with a USB port and status LEDs. USB port will be used for programming later. On the rear, we have the antenna connector via an SMA, a power switch, and then a DC input via a barrel socket. Now these modems work on the 70 centimeter handband, and even though you can configure the frequency within the 70 centimeter handband, you do require a license to use these. Maximum RF power is rated near 500 milliwatts, which is adjustable downwards. External amplifiers are also supported if you require more power. Now the MPR70 uses managed TDMA, which allows up to seven clients to connect simultaneously to the master. The master in P70 controls the distribution of the transmit time slot, telling the clients when they can transmit. So in theory, the transmit time slot allocated by the master to clients should be fair to all clients, meaning that if one client has lots of traffic, links to the other clients should still be usable. One of the settings of the NPR70, which we'll look at shortly, is the radio network ID. Now think of this as a CTCSS tone, like on a VHF and UHF repeater. Only those clients with the same radio network ID will be able to access the master. Now this allows for multiple systems in the same proximity or even same frequency. The NPR 70s can be configured to use one of nine different modulation settings. Each of these will have a different usable data rate. Remember though, that the higher the data rate, the more bandwidth that the transmission will use. So for this, it's worth checking with your local licensing conditions to make sure that you're not over bandwidth or spreading onto a frequency that's already in use. For the example shown later in this video, I'll be using modulation 20, which will provide a usable data rate of around 68 kilobits per second. As you can see from the chart, modulation 24, the highest setting, provides a throughput of around 470 kilobits per second. Obviously, at that rate, it's going to be quite a wide transmission. What's also interesting is that if the master is connected to a network with internet access, then if configured correctly, the clients can access the internet too, although it might be unusable for general browsing if the bandwidth or modulation is set quite low. Of course, to demonstrate these working, I will need two of them. One of them I will configure as a master and then connect it to my local area network. The second I will connect to a Windows laptop, which has no internet or other network connections. This one I will configure as a client. So firstly, configuration is done by using a USB cable, and this will provide a virtual COM port on your computer. For this, you'll need a terminal program like PuTTY for Windows or maybe CoolTerm for the Mac. So let's first set up the master. So from your serial terminal program, select the COM port for the NPR70 that you've plugged in. Then just copy the settings as shown on the screen. Now what's interesting here is that the NPR70 uses a custom serial port speed of 921600. So you will need to make sure that is supported on your client software. Now once connected, just press the return button on your keyboard you should then see a prompt that says ready. Once you see this, you can start the configuration process. Let's first see the current configuration by typing display config and then pressing enter. Here you can see all of the current settings. We don't need to change all of them, but there are a few to change. So let's start. First, I will set the master's call sign to M0DQW-0, obviously set this to your own. Next, I'll tell this NPR70 that this is the master. 
change in the frequency is also a setting you'll want to change now. Then on to the modulation setting. As mentioned before, I'll be using modulation 20 as that has the lowest bandwidth. I'm also going to lower the RF output power as the master and the client will be in the same room for this demonstration. The antennas that I'm going to be using, which are just screwed onto the back of the MPR-70s, are just from a couple of handheld radios that I have here in this shack. Now at this point, you can issue the save command and then the display config command to check the new settings have been changed. Another important setting is to set radio on at startup. Set this to on to make sure that the MPR70 radio modem is started every time you power on the device. If you don't have this set, then you would need to issue the radio start command via the console every time you power on the MPR70. Now I'll set the network IP address of this master modem. You will need to make sure you enter an IP address that is not being used on your local network, assuming that you have this plugged into your network. As the clients can pull their own IP address from the master, the IP begin setting tells the master which start IP address to allocate to the connected clients. I then set the def a root value, which is basically just a gateway IP address. Now, if your master is connected to a network with internet access, then you can turn on the DNS and enter a DNS address if required. Now, once finished, you can enter the save command and then reboot. The master NPR70 should now be configured and waiting for a client connection via RF. You will notice that the con yellow LED will slow blink. Now, this indicates that the NPR70 has been configured as a master. Now perform the same process to set up the client. You can set the client here as shown here on the left. What you will notice is that the radio network ID is not the same as the master, so it will not work. Changing the radio network ID on the client to the same as the master makes them spring to life and connect to each other. Using the status command on both the terminal windows show that they are now connected to each other. Now on the laptop, which has the client connected via Ethernet cable, I then issue a ping command just to see if the laptop can see the router on my home network. A ping response confirmed that the laptop is now connected to my home network via the MPR70 radio modems. Now as another test, let's try downloading a file from the internet across the radio link. For this, I'm just going to use the curl command on a Windows command prompt. As another brief test to see how much faster the highest modulation setting would work, I set the modulation type to 24 on both the client and the master. Performing the same curl command to download a file from the internet, we can clearly see the massive jump in download speed. It was also very apparent that the speed was faster as the RX and TX LEDs on the client were flickering a lot faster. So what else can we do with these devices? Well, we could use LAN Messenger. It's a multi-platform application that works like the old MSM Messenger, but it doesn't require any internet or server installation. Just download and install the application on any computer on the same network, and you can send messages and files to each other. Now, this example shown on the screen is the laptop, which is only connected to the MPR70, and then my Mac, which is connected to the local area network where the master MPR70 is connected to via an Ethernet connection. Exchanging messages between the two is fairly quick without much delay. If you had seven clients connected via RF, then you could potentially have up to eight users chatting without the need for the internet or a dedicated chat server. Also, if you had a couple of masters connected together, then that would extend the network even further. So there we go guys, the MPR70 IPv4 radio modem. What do you guys think of this? Let me know down in the comments below. Also, if you've used these before, then let me know what you've done with them. Real life use cases will be really interesting to read and learn about. I can think of quite a lot of uses for this, and it would be great if we could get a network of these running around the world with local radio clusters for people to connect to. I know there's other ham radio solutions out there like Arden, etc, etc, but this is something that's pretty much off the shelf and doesn't really require much configuration. 
Until the next video, take care, stay safe, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.